Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon and today I'm going to show you how to set up, play and review the game Crit. Now this was initially on Kickstarter. Uh, this is by Andrew Nerga and Jeffrey Chin. Now Andrew Nerga, I do know a guy from school called Andrew Nerga who, um, who at least his father or his parents were I believe American, but uh, I know this uh, guy is American. I don't think it's the same person, but it might well be. This game takes 25 minutes, one to four players, age 14 plus. This is an expansion. This is, like I said, on Kickstarter. We won't talk about that, but I just want to show you one thing, which is an expansion. That kind of makes up a three, and then if you flip it around, it makes up a two. And if you turn it around, you kind of make a four, which is very cool, but enough of that. So, the king is dead, and of course, long live the king and all the rest. And in this particular game, we're trying to get the most victory points, and to do that, we are using our servants, who are dice. So I said the king is dead and his last wish is to be laid to rest with his prized possessions. You're going to choose one of these relative people and you're going to pick one. I played this guy who I believe looks like Andrew Nerga. I'll just take him for this instance and put the rest to one side. And like I said, you are going to use your servants to try and create the most influence and do the best. So I said you're trying to get the most possessions, uh, the same family heirlooms he's bequeathed to you and to his other children. And I'm going to break into the royal crypt to reclaim what is rightfully yours. I'm going to show you a setup for two players. So any cards on here which have got a four or a three like that in Roman numerals, just chuck back in the box. Now, you're going to have the remaining cards and you're going to shuffle them up. So please take those cards and shuffle them up. You're going to choose a start player card and in a two player game, they're also going to take the lights out card. Otherwise, three or four, you're going to pass it around to one more player. So let's just take these down as first player marker. You're going to take those respective cards. Uh, easiest I recommend starting on is A. Let's place them up here. So we have the Pottery Collector. And you're trying to collect certain cards as a set collection game. You have the Manuscript Collector, the Tapestry Collector, the Remains Collector, the Jewelry Collector, and the Idol Collector. And then you do various things. Let's just take my player card and stick it over there. So you're going to shuffle up these cards, and then you're going to draw out three cards. Okay, so you're going to take the first card, face up, the second card, face up, and the third card, face down. And at the end of the game, you need to have, for example, two of these to enable you to do certain things. All of these things are worth victory points. This is what you're collecting. The most of these will give you the victory. So in this case, if you have two of these at the end of the game, first you've unlocked the ability, so one of them doesn't do anything, but two of them will give you two additional points. So it's worth five, six, seven. Over, of course, if you have uh, three of them, you get an additional four victory points with four an extra eight. If you have this one, if you have two of them at the end of the game, whatever they have the value printed on them, it's going to be four points instead. You also have, if you have this scroll symbol, the tapestry, if you have the most of them, you're going to get additional five victory points. At this point, we'll come back to, but basically with two of them, you can flip your cards over as I'll get on to, and you'll recover a die. Over here, if you have two of those at the end, such as this, you'll score the highest valued one twice. And over here, you can re-roll a die, which as you'll see, is quite important. So this is the box for crypt. We will need it over here. Apologies for the side edging over here as well. So we're going to choose your dice, dice respective to your colour. So in this case, we're playing black. So let's take out the dice for black out of the baggie. And here we go. So I have got the three dice here for black. And let's just have lavender colour over here as well. So again, we're starting. You can roll to you start. So let's just see. Oh, I got a three. Never mind. Let's say I was winning. Okay, so let's make sure these are a bit more in shot. Okay, so whilst I'm doing this, uh, please make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell. Also, check out the comments or reply quickly. And lastly, check out the descriptions for Instagram, Facebook, stuff like that. So you do not roll your dice at this instance, but you're saying whether or not you're likely to complete it. So I'm going to say yes. I'm going to try and take that card. What it is, I'm going to do this action. Now, that action is called a claim action. So I'm going there. The first part of the game is to reveal, to reveal these cards. The second one is to claim. And because I'm doing lights out, it means basically I have a second turn. So the second player takes their turn, and then I take my final turn. In this instance, let's try something different. I'm going to say I'm going to claim this one. So I don't know what that one is, but I'm going to claim it with, say, two fours. Uh, or let's say I claim this with a four, and then this one with two threes. Okay. And now, again, purple's player turn, lavender player's turn. They can go somewhere. They can go here for nothing. Then they can do something else. So they might try and knock me out. They could go for a five. 
and they've got nothing else to do, so maybe they place an additional five. Now I take this back, and now it's back to me. Again, I'm the first player, and in a two-player game, also the last player. So I get one more turn. In this instance, I can go over here. So I'll just play it cheaply, and play it two. Of course, they could have gone high and risked it. This is where it gets interesting. So let's resolve it. In this case, um, Lavender needs to roll two fives to ensure they don't go in the crypt. So let's just roll for them. They've got a four and a two. They don't get either. So they're going to go in the crypt. Now on to, but they do get the card. So they have three victory points. And that goes face down into their pile. And let's just have purple over here just to show it's something of their crypt. Now on to my turn. So in this instance with this card, I need to get a three on each. I get one three uh, enough or basically a five. I'm going to keep the card regardless. So I don't know or can't recall that to the end, but it's worth two victory points. And I got, this person got bumped. I must roll at least a two. And I do, I roll a five. So I get to keep this card as well. And now the first player order changes and it goes over here. We're drawing three new cards. Uh, so again, two are face up, one is face down. And should, for example, someone had had two of these cards and they failed their roll, then, or something like this, they can take a die back. Or if they did here, they can re-roll. Now again, it's Purple's turn, but they've only got one die. So they have two options. They can either claim, which is doing this again, or they can recover. So right now, let's just try and claim again. And again, they're gonna go really hard on saying, they're trying, well, no one else claimed any purple, they'll try and claim a tapestry. Now it's my turn. I only have two dice as well. So I can either go, try and go hard on that one, or maybe I go somewhere else. And in this instance, I go easy, one and one because they have a second turn. They've got nothing to place. And now that's a silly move because they need a six. They don't get it. So that goes away. And now this comes back. So they're gonna have this at the end of the game. I'm gonna take these two dice. Of course, I'm guaranteed to roll at least a one. This comes in, so I'm gonna get three at the end of the game, but of course that's hidden. I don't know what the value is. So now what happens is you are going to collect. So uh, it's gonna flip back to me to start. It's a new round. I have some dice. Uh, we're obviously going to draw some new cards out. So again, three cards, two face up, one face down. We don't know how many points it's worth. And I'm going to, again, choose to do something. So in this instance, I'm going to choose to place out a one and a one. Now, this is interesting because purple or lavender haven't got any cards at all. So now what they can do is they can't claim a card, they can recover. So they can recover all of their exhausted servants, but that's gonna be it for their turn. So that's my turn, of course, guaranteed to roll two ones, and it works in my favor, because now I can just take that for free money, and anything else is gonna get discarded out of the game. Then you can reveal, refill again, it's gonna be their turn, it's revealing three cards, and now I've still got one thing there. So now it's their turn, and they're gonna go with, I don't know, uh, they could go low, they could go high. I mean, like, they've got more dice than me, so they might just go one, one, and again, they try, maybe they want this one, or maybe this one they think is higher than two. They go for, say, a five. So they're risking, I don't want to go there, but risking that they need to get a five or a six. I've got two dice, yeah, I just knock them out there. I could have placed two threes, but I knock them out. But because they are uh, the first and the last player, they get to go again. So in this case, they might bump me off again with a three and a three. I claim no cards, but now they're rolling and they claimed enough. So they keep the card and then they get to go here. And in this instance, uh, yep, they get to claim that too. And finally, uh, let's see, I don't see what I had to roll. They go to the crypt, which is a very cool little box. And that of course goes over there too. So let's just talk about that claiming again. So again, you can claim any number of servants um, basically onto the desired treasure cards. So uh, that's great. But in terms of recover, you are basically taking cards back. Um, something to be aware of is, uh, yeah, when you want to collect anything, uh, be aware that sometimes whenever you do claim something, you might always have to reveal it. So when you claim treasure cards, they're always gonna be kept face down. And when you have another um, treasure cards to meet it, you have to access that reward. So in this case, if I wanted to have, if I had two of these to recover a die, you have to flip them the other way up. If I wanted to, let's say they, remember they only roll like a, a one, so they didn't get enough and they needed a six, they can flip it over. So we now know they've got four victory point card and they get to re-roll their die because they did this. They get, always keep the card, so they always get to keep the card in play, but they get a chance to re-roll and do better. So what do you think of the game? Well, firstly, this is the Gilded Edition, which has got lovely Gilded Edges. The basic 
Pun game, I think, was about nine dollars. This is like thirty-four or something like that. Uh, I don't know how thick the car stock is in the other one, but pretty thick. I think it's like four hundred GSM. Uh, the rules, I don't actually have any kind of background, it's just white, which is fine. The rules aren't great. Uh, we had to check, you know, videos and stuff to ensure we kind of definitely understood it. I think that was open to uh, misinterpretation. Haven't tried the expansion. Um, I've heard the solo mode involves a ghost, uh, which is fine, but it seems like maybe better as a multiplayer game. Uh, again, I haven't tried out the B sides of these cards easily, or oh, easy, sorry, either. But these seem quite interesting to play with as well and quite, uh, yeah, something to work towards. Very close scoring, um, whilst I didn't, I think, fully understand the game, it was only one point in it at the end. Now, of course, if you do get a bad roll, yeah, that is potentially a third or more of your dice uh, locked up and wasting a turn, but I said regardless of that, it still happened to be a very close, um, closely won contest by literally one point in it. Um, at the end of the game, if you have any dice which are not in the crypt, you also get a point back as well, so that's worth noting as well. Aside from that, like I said, it's a very nice dinky box. I think crypt and stuff makes a lot of sense for the art, um, and it's actually quite nice and bossed uh, finish as well there too, which is very cool. If you have any questions, though, uh, please let me know. I'm keen to know what your thoughts are on the game crypt. Well, I'm going to pack this away, let you crack on with everything else we're going to do, and uh, see you on the next one. All the best. Bye for now.